right? Um, and, and so, man, what, what we're doing throughout this series is looking at how God designed this and what that looks like. And, and ultimately, it's this. If the church doesn't talk about uh, sex and, and, and all that God has for it, you better believe the world would love to tell us all about it and what we should believe, right? And so we're looking at God's word about what that looks like for you and I. And if God created sex and we as Christians uh, you know, believe God's word, we should be the sexiest. And so we're going to be looking at what that uh, means to bring uh, sexy back into the church. And so our theme verse uh, for this series is Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. It says this, So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. And, and this is where we get the phrase, the Imago Dei. And the Imago Dei simply means the image of God. And so what that means, it means for every characteristic and aspect of our lives man, to align with God and his work, right? And so speaking of our sexuality, the Imago Dei with, you know, with our sexuality, we have to align you know, with him and what that looks like. And, and so what we looked at uh, the first week was, man, the origin the, of humanity, right? And so today we're going to be looking at the sexuality and relationship. And so um, if you're single, if you raise your hand, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but man, maybe, you know, maybe you'll meet somebody at the end of this uh, service. But then uh, next week, Pastor Selena is going to be uh, looking at intimacy and marriage. And so you don't want to miss that one as well. And so today's message, if you're taking notes, hope that you are going to say that every single week. And so everybody's typing or writing. Uh, today's message is called Becoming the One. Will you say that with me one more time, please? Becoming the One. Man, the decisions you make today will absolutely shape you into the person you'll be in the future, okay? The decisions that you make today, church, will absolutely shape you into the person who you are in the future. If you think that your decisions today don't have the ability to impact you in the future, you're wrong uh, because they absolutely do. And so what we're really going to be looking at today is that, man, there's this kind of misconception, the stigma of finding Mr. or Mrs. Right. But we're going to look at today is, man, maybe it's not so much about that, but maybe it's about becoming Mr. and Mrs. Right. And because, man, we will never be satisfied with other people until we learn to be satisfied with God. But once we are satisfied with God, and once we are content with the plan that he has for us, then he will lead us to the person, man, who he has created us uh, to be with, or whoever we choose um, to spend the rest of our lives together. And so maybe you're here today, and you're like, man, I wish I would have known this was the singles message, because I would have stayed at home. But, man, to push back on that, um, those who are already married, or maybe you're a grandparent, or whatever that might be, I want to encourage you that it is, it is crucial for Christians that have been in the church and in this life long enough to be able to remind their, grand, uh, their grandchildren and their children what it means to be a man or woman of God and how purity in 2018 is possible through Christ Jesus. And no matter what the world says about us, our sexuality, God's word has uh, meant the law and and has the, the uh, commands for us to live by. And so I'm going to pray one more time, and we're going to get started. Father, uh, thank you for your word. Jesus, thank you for who you are. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just uh, move in this place in a mighty, mighty way. God, we pray this in your name. And everybody said... Amen. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of that phrase, man, finding the one or Mr. or Mrs. Right. Anybody, right? So, or church, of course, Christians do that, right? And, man, so I remember I, once I was saved, I just, I just knew that God had somebody for me like that next day, right? And, man, it didn't take me long to realize that that wasn't the case. And so I found myself in a very lengthy season of, of wondering who that would be. And I talked to different people. And, and, man, I just, man, had so many countless conversations with Pastor Selena and John and be like, man, I don't know if this is the one or not, you know, and so I'm just praying, and you know, I'm a I'm a man after God's own heart, like David. So I'm just waiting, you know. I'm um, Boaz looking for my Ruth. If you don't know Christian lingo, that's what that is. And so, man, I'm just like waiting, and I'll never forget one day. I was so frustrated. I was like, God, I'm so sick and tired of waiting. And man, and I'll never forget God telling me, man, that the Holy Spirit prompted me. Dylan, you need to quit spending so much time and energy uh, on finding the one and trying to force your way into the situation. You need to spend all your time and energy on focus and becoming the one. And I remember, like, God, I'm ready. I'll never forget him saying, no, you're not. And I was like, what? Man, like, I'm, a, you know, I'm about to be a pastor, and Lord, I'm a Christian, and, and I quit that old lifestyle, and I'm, and I'm living for you now. And God showed me that, that, Dylan, you've got to learn to delight in me, because, Dylan, if you don't learn to delight in me and become content with me, there will never be a person on this earth that you will ever be content with. And I'm here to tell you, church, that no matter if you're single or if you're married, we never stop becoming the person that God has called us to be. 
right? And never, no matter if you're married, guess what? There's still work to be done. If you don't believe me, ask your spouse, right? And if you're single here today, man, I promise you, if you allow God's word to speak to you, you will leave here encouraged and knowing that God absolutely has somebody for you and he has a plan for your life. And so today's focus is this. I've already alluded to it a little bit, but it's this. It's not as much about finding the one as it is about becoming the one. Okay, I'm going to say it again. It is not so much about finding the one as it is about becoming the one. This thought originates from a pastor, a very well-known pastor, uh, Andy Stanley. He has this uh, thought. It sounds way more profound than it is, but it's good. He says, are you the person that the person you are looking for is looking for? I'm going to say it again. This is tweetable. Are you the person... The person that you are looking for is looking for. You're like, what does that mean? Okay, I want you to think about this. If you were the opposite sex and you saw you, would you be interested in you, right? It's something like that. I know it's a weird thought, but man, if you found that person, would they be into you, right? I'm not just talking about looks. I'm not talking about your job. I'm saying for you who you, know, who you are as a person, would they be interested in to you? And I've found time and time again, along with Pastor Selena and, and Pastor Stephen and so many different people, that there's young and, and old that come and, and they have these stories and they say, man, I never thought that my life would be where it's at now. Whether that's in your marriage and divorce or your singleness and you're like, man, and the enemy is just winning into my life. And I'm here to tell you that, man, God loves you. He has a plan for you. And the, you know, rather than having all this anxiety and, and freaking out about who it's going to be and, and, and when it's going to be, if we can learn to delight in God and worry about becoming the one, God will show us who that one is. But we have to delight in God, who is the one, before we find that person. And so today, we're going to be looking at um, quite a bit of scripture. I'm going to move fast, uh, some heavy scripture, but I pray that you'll write this down uh, and that you will apply this to your life. So let's get started. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. This is Paul writing to the church of Corinth. He says, now regarding the question you asked in your letter, yes, it is good to abstain from sexual relations. Here's the context there. The context is Paul lived a life of celibacy, okay? He never got married, and so what was happening in this church of Corinth, there were some people, this, this sect of believers that said, man, even if you're married and you're having sexual relations, you're sinning against God, and so they're asking Paul, they're saying, hey, is this true? Like, if inside a, a biblical marriage, you know, is it sin to have sexual relations? Because Paul didn't have sex, and then Jesus didn't, and so they're wondering, like, man, is this bad? And he's saying, absolutely not, right? Like, it's not, it's not bad, but he goes on to say, but yes, it is good for to abstain from sexual relations, but because there is so much sexual immorality. Everybody say sexual immorality. The word sexual immorality literally means to sell off, to sell off your purity. Okay, so purity means, you know, without blemish, blameless, like it's a purified state. And so we, you know, we are born sinners, but God purifies us. And so what it means to, to in, engage in sexual immorality is to take our, our you know, our sexual uh, beings, our bodies, and our, and our eyes and our hearts and forfeit them. So every time that we commit sexual sin, we are selling off our purity. We are giving what, was, what God made pure, and we are, we are justifying that, okay? He says, but because there is so much of this sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife, and each woman should have his own husband. So we live in a culture right now that doesn't understand why we need to get married. Number one, we got to look at sexual immorality. He says, it's good for you to get married because of all this sexual immorality in this world. And so you don't get married just to have sex, okay? Uh, though it's one of God's greatest gifts, man, you must find a man or woman after God's own heart, and you, man, you fall in love that way, and then and sexual activity is a result and benefit of that. However, we live in a culture, and I was listening to a, a sports podcast the other day, and this man was just talking about how how you know, marriage, you, I mean, it's crazy. You don't, you don't get married, uh, you know, you shouldn't get married. Uh, you know, first you need to live with that person. You need to, to have sex with that person and, and see if you, you know, if you could spend the rest of your life with that person. And I'm here to tell you that that is an immoral view of God. 
Man, if you are engaging in that sexual activity, man, without being married, you are committing sexual immorality, right? But also we have people that they say, you know what, God has not called me to a life of celibacy, which means to, to you know, you, you're, you know, you think that you're supposed to get married, but yet there's, you know, 30, 40, 50 year old people that are just like, you know, I'm just really having trouble finding that person. I, I want to encourage some of you men and women that, man, you need to, to have a reality check and not jump into a relationship, jump into someone, but if you're constantly having relationships relationship problems. Maybe it's not the, you know that person. Maybe it's you. Maybe there's some things that you need to work on. Just like I did when I thought I was ready, God needed to begin to work on me because he says it is good. It says each man and woman should have each other. But also, if you notice, it says each man should have his own wife and each woman have his own husband. What did we look at in the first week in Genesis? God created man, then he created woman, Adam and Eve. Okay? This is not monogamous uh, relationship where you have several different spouses, and this is also uh, man, this is a, a, a straight marriage, man and woman. We're going to look at that in a second, but that is the foundation of a biblical marriage, and anytime you commit sexual sin outside of that, that is sexual immorality. And it goes on to say, verse 9, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God, which is heaven? Don't, don't fool yourselves, those who indulge, everybody say indulge, in sexual sin, which is translated sexual immorality, or who worship idols, or commit adultery, or are male or female prostitutes, or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or abusive, or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. I want to pause there. First of all, it says indulge. What does indulge mean? It means to engulf yourself in a situation. It means that there is a pattern. I need everybody to look up at me here. If your life, okay, if there is temptations and sins in your life that absolutely that you indulge yourself in, which means without repentance. What does repentance mean? It means to turn away. I no longer want this. Okay, it's one thing to stumble right, with that sin. It's another to say, I am indulging myself. I'm here to tell you that you have not allowed the Holy Spirit to have, to gain access in that part of your lives, but if you allow the Holy Spirit to have access in to that part of your life, you can have freedom through the power of the Holy Spirit. You can, but then you go on, it says, or practice homosexuality, right, and this is one of the most, the most debated topics in all of Christendom right now, Right, And you, you have new secular uh, commentators and scholars who begin to argue, say, I don't really know if this is biblical or not, but I'm here to tell you what we looked at last or two weeks ago when God created man and woman. Then you catch up here in Corinthians, right? Homosexuality is a sin. Man on man, girl on girl, okay, that, that is like in, in the biblical guidelines, that is sin. Though we try to um, cover it up and say, oh, it's not really, you know, that bad in, in 2018, that is the word of God. And I know that might not be the popular thing to say today, but I am just, I, I'm devoted to the word, and here's what the word says. And some people want to argue, well, Jesus never said that. Well, I, I beg to differ because when the Pharisees begin to ask him about divorce and he says, Jesus, what's your, you know, what's your take on this? And he says, you know the word, quoting what we read the first week. He says that God created man and woman and each man should have a woman. There's no ever any sign in the Old Testament or New Testament about this except for condemning homosexuality. Here's the thing, though. Is it a sin? Absolutely. But if you notice, or are the thieves or greedy people, or drunkards, or abusive, or cheap people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Here's what I want you to understand today, church. Homosexuality or any other sexual sin is not a greater sin than the others. Do you hear me? That is the word of God right there. It doesn't say, oh, we're going to list the, you know, the, the, the really bad ones first. And we'll get to that in the next slide. And then we'll do the lessers. No, no, no. It says, if you do any of these, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. It doesn't mean that you, you know, you fell into it every once in a while. It means, but when you indulge yourself, you will not, man, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so I want us to know that we have one extreme over here that says, no, homosexuality and all this sexual sin and, and all this, it's fine, right? And they begin to, 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 to perverse the, the original language in it. Then over here you have the Christians that, that are just bigots and have signs that says you're going to hell and, and, and just, just disgraceful. I'm here to tell you that neither of those are right. And we as Christians must love 
the, the gay community. We must love people that have been, you know, um, you know, indulged in this lifestyle because you condemning them will never change a heart, but you showing them the love of God will be the best thing to change the heart of any man or woman. Maybe you're here today and you say, but pastor, you know, I was born this way. I have my sexual tendencies to go this way, or I have friends that are not attracted to the same sex. Well, verse 11 talks about this. It says, some of you were once, everybody say once, like that, but you were cleansed, you were made holy, you were made right with God, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. I was born a very angry, mean person, lustful person, bitter person, right? Pastor Selena, believe it or not, was born a liar, right? We're talking about that today. You, man, you are born sinful, Yes, in my sinful nature, or sinful nature, I am that way, but Jesus Christ says, you were once like that, but now you are cleansed and you're made holy. And so we're not over here condemning people based on their temptations. No, no, no. We say this is the word of God, brother and sister in Christ, or, or brother and sister, but we are here to love you through this. So it is our job as Christians to come alongside people, not to treat them as lesser or not to make them as outcasts, but also not to support them in their beliefs, but say, this is the word of God, but I love you no matter what. And I know that's a heavy topic. And some of you are looking at me like, I cannot believe he did. He just went there. I'm here to tell you, I fear the word of God way more than I do man or woman's approval. I, I don't care. I mean that in a gentle way, but that is the word of God, but we must love them through it. It goes on to say, 1 Corinthians 6. 18 through 20, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. This is the only sin that affects your own body. You don't believe me? Think about of all the regrets that came with sexuality once somebody began to give in to that temptation. Verse 19 says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. He says, don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? What is that? That's Old Testament literature right there. In the Old Testament, God man, lived in his spirit, would resonate in the Ark of the Covenant. It wasn't bound to that, but he made a way for his presence to rest with the Israelites, God's chosen people. And so now anybody who accepts Jesus Christ in their hearts can, can have the Holy Spirit, who is God, the th third part of the Trinity, in their hearts and in their lives. And he says, man, now we are the presence, or we are the body of the, Holy, the temple of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? Remember, the Imago Dei means that you're created in, in the image of God. If you think that sex is just sex, why is there so much um, perversion in it? Why is there so much counseling that needs to take place as people that's, that's been hurt and abused and, 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 and men and women who have given themselves into this lifestyle, but yet... It's taken years to recover because it is not just sex. It is one of God's greatest gifts, and it affects the body, as it says right there. And when we engage in this sin, in this sexual sin, it affects everything, our heart, our mind, and our body. And so we have to realize that we are not our own. If you sit here today and, and, and you're struggling with this conversation, you're struggling with this, I'm here to tell you that verse 20 says, God brought you or bought you with a price you're, you're at, if this scripture makes you so mad, you have to ask the question, are you looking at, at the scripture through your own lenses and what you think is right, or are you looking at it saying, God, what do you tell me is right? Listen, I, I might be a pastor now, and in three, uh, three days, I think, I'll be saved and sober eight years, and praise God, I'm so thankful for that, right? But in that, thanks, but in that, I didn't get saved, but woo, got it all figured out now. It didn't happen that way. Man, I mean, I, I mean, there were some sins that went away instantaneously, instantaneously, but there was others that just, as Paul says, I have to discipline my body like an athlete. I'm going to transform it, man, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, because I'm a pastor doesn't make me more holier than you. I have the same Holy Spirit you do, but you have to ask the question, do you have the same hunger to say, God, my body is not my own, it is yours, and I want your will to be done in and through me. And if you're here and you're mad at Christianity and you're mad at what culture says and can't believe they're condemning other people, I want you to ask the question, man, are you looking at it as you are your own or you are God's? 
And when you realize that you are God's own body, God's treasure, and that your body is not your own, you will willfully lay down your life for God and say, Lord, whatever your will says, allow it to be done in my life. That's the question. Do you have, do you have that mentality or not? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. It says, run. Everyone say run. Notice that's the second choice of run right before sexual sin. From anything that stimulates youthful lust, instead pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship, everybody say companionship, of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. So here you have run again. That wasn't just random. They didn't have emojis back then. They didn't have gifts or GIS, whatever you call them. I don't know, right, like to explain what was going on, right? They would repeat. It was repetitive. When they wanted to get something across, they would repeat that word over and over and over. And here you have run again in the same selection of Scripture. Why is he saying run when it comes to sexual lust, sexual immorality, sexual temptation? Because I'm here to tell you, you flirt. Everybody look up at me here. You flirt with sexual temptation long enough, it'll take you farther than you ever thought it would. I shared stories before of sitting across the table with people, and they said, man, I never thought I would be this far. I never thought. It's because you flirt with it. I'm here to tell you, church, the only way to go about this in 2018 is to absolutely run away from it. There's times in my life where I uh, take off social media on my phone. Um, I, I currently have uh, internet software along with other, several pastors that I know. You say, wow, wow, are you really that messed up? No, because I'm running from it. I don't want anything to be a part of my life that isn't of God because, man, my body is not my own. I was bought with the price. What do you have? I mean, what, what, like, like what, what is that? Anything that stimulates your useful lust, what is it? I don't care if you're older. We all get tempted by something. What is it? Maybe you're married and you're like, oh, this doesn't apply to me. You better believe it does. How do you look at your spouse? How do you treat them? How, where's your eyes at? Where's it go? If you're single, man, are you just, you, man, you really think going out with your friends time and time again to that same bar downtown or wherever or, or being around with that guy or that girl, I mean, time and time again, it has robbed you. It has made you question your sexuality. It has made you question your identity, but yet you keep going back to it time and time again. And that is why Paul he says to Timothy, run, run. You know how many pastors have been wiped out? of sexual immorality. Guess who was a young, thriving pastor? Timothy. He had probably the largest church in all of Scripture, and Paul is looking at him and saying, hey, I know you have a calling upon your life, but you got to run, and you have to surround yourself around those with pure hearts. Listen, for years I prayed, God, would you surround me around people, man, that would just man, make me strong. But I'm here to tell you, you have to be willing to run away from the temptations and run to the accountability. And if your companionships are the ones that are telling you it's okay, it's just another drink, it's just another one night stand, it's just Tinder date, it's just this and just that, man, we are asking the wrong questions. We are, are being around the wrong people. I'm not meaning to be negative. This is an amazing thing, but yet we look at the statistics and we're all about singing the new sexy song that's on the radio or Spotify, iTunes, whatever it might be. But when it comes to the church, we get all awkward and yet we wonder why the church is failing about educating the young people in the church. It's because we've become cowards when it speaks to, sexual, to sexuality. Uh -uh, like, man, do you know what I would do? And this isn't a poor me. Don't give me sympathy. Do you know what I would do if I was a young kid and wouldn't have seen some of the things that I saw? If I would have had that talk, says, hey, Dylan, here's your worth, man. Here's what you need to do. Here's how you need to wait. Here's why. I remember just feeling so disgusting when I got saved. And then I went up to John, Pastor Selena's husband. I said, man, I said, you mean I don't got to do that stuff no more? He says, no, you don't. I said, good. I never wanted to anyways. I always felt dirty. I always felt messy. I don't know, this might be a lot of information. I'm just being real. Because I know some of you right now are sitting there and Satan has told you that you are ashamed and then that you're dirty. And I'm here to tell you that that is a lie straight from the pit of hell. God loves you and he purifies you. But now, 
once you're forgiven, once you're loved, once you're made new, are you going to run back to the same crew? Going to run back to the same temptations? Run back to the same computer? Run back to the same friends, that same girl, that same guy? Or are you going to run to God and say, no, 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 I'm done with that. I'm done with that. And when I caught, you know, when I was there and I was saved, my God, who do you have for me and all this? He says, Dylan, I need you to just focus on me. Quit trying to insert yourself into my plan. You just, you just seek me and I'll give you more than you could ever imagine. I'm here to tell you, I know I've only been married almost two years, but man, my wife, Maddie, I mean, I can't believe the love that we have for one another. I never dreamed of that. I couldn't stand women when I was a kid because of some of the things I saw and, and the way I was hurt. I, I just hated the entire thought. And as God began to form my heart back, and as I saw John and Selena live in front of me, I said, I can have that. But that starts with me running away from the past and running to God and say, God, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Psalms 119 tells us that how does a young man stay pure? By obeying your word. Some of you here today, I mean, you're looking down the wrong alley. You wonder why that guy treats you that, that way? It's because you're, you're barking up the wrong tree, my friend. Just being real. You've got to run from it and surround yourself. That's why you get a part of a life group and be a part of, man, you got to have a friend change. That way, man, your friends and family can come together and say, this is your worth. No matter what you've done, God makes you new, but it's time to stay pure because we're not selling off our purity any longer. Amen? You got to believe it though. I'm running out of time. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 through 13. It says, if you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. I want somebody to hear this right now. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. That is good news, amen. The next time that guy comes, that girl comes, that temptation comes, that gummit, there's a way out. We, we feel so condemned. We feel so isolated and we're, we're bound and addicted. But I'm here to tell you, God says through the power of the Holy Spirit, there's always a way out. But you have to be willing to make that decision to run away from that temptation or run to God. It's your choice. But God will always offer a way out. And final scripture will be done. Psalms 37, 4 says, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. I want to read another verse. It won't be up on the screen. I want you to hear this. Proverbs 31, 4. Charm is deceptive, and beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. You know what that translates to? Gravity wins. If you don't understand what that means, it means you're going to get older, and you ain't going to look as good as what you once did. It's cracking me up, man. On Facebook right now, the thing that's going viral is, what, what will you look like in 23 years or 30 years? I'm like, listen, there's going to be a day where you're going to be doing a time swap. We're going back 20 years, right? Like one day you ain't going to look the way you did. And if you're going after that person just for physical attributes, you will be broken and miserable. But when, it, when, when you are looking at a man or a woman of God, that, that it's about their foundation is laid on God's word. It doesn't matter how old you get together, you will fall in love and continue to fall in love until your last breath on earth. Don't settle. Don't settle. Y'all, singles, don't settle. I know it's tempting. I know you're wondering, man, is, I don't even know if there is somebody. Or, man, I'm divorced. I have kids. I don't know. Man, God probably doesn't have anybody for me. Listen. If you delight in God and not delight in the thought of just being married, but you focus on God, you get your identity in him, he will give you your heart's desire. It doesn't mean you want a girl tomorrow, boom, you got it. But it means, God, I want you so much more than everything else in this world. God, I'm going to devote my life to you. I'm going to give everything I have. You will end up with somebody you never thought you would. And I'll tell you what, every day that I wake up, I'm reminded of God's gracious grace on my life when I look at my wife. Doesn't mean we're perfect, but I'm here to tell you, I know I have to become the person that God is craving to be each and every day, and it doesn't end with I do. Every morning, you got to work at becoming the one. So my question is, 
Who are you becoming? Who are you becoming? If you're older in life, you say, oh, man, I never thought I'd be here. Guess what? The game ain't over yet. God's got the greatest comeback for you of all time. You can go out with the bang. If you're young, you think you've messed up too much, that is bull crap. God loves you, he adores you, and he'll renew you. But will you become the person that God has created you to be? Let's pray. Father, thank you for who you are. Jesus, you're so good. Man, I can't believe it. God, I pray that today's message was touching to someone. God, not my words. Man, this is easy. All I got to do is read your word. God, would your word speak to people? God, allow them not to try to discern, well, does this mean this or does that mean that? No, no, I just want everybody right now to bow your head, close your eyes. God, I ask for the broken individuals right now in this room, male, female, young, old, God, the chances of them having a a scar, a sexual scar is great. And God, I'm asking that your spirit will deal with that right now. If try to hide it, try to cover it up. God, I don't know the situation, bad, evil, their own mistake. I pray against the enemy and the condemnation right now in the name of Jesus. God, that they are freed and loved and renewed. God, that their identity is in God and not someone else. And I pray that our marriages will thrive more than ever. God, and that they will continue to become the one. God, I pray specifically right now for the singles. They're feeling doubtful, lonely, insecure, broken, dirty, and worthless. I pray right now for renewal. Jesus, I pray that they know that is a child of God. They didn't ever think they would get to this place. But God, allow them to know nobody else is, is, is pointing at them. Nobody else is laughing at them. It's only the enemy. But we're here to tell them that they are loved by God and loved by this church. God, for those who have questioned their sexuality and, and have different thoughts and feelings, I pray that that condemnation they feel from the church and, and from the evil one goes away. And they know where God's, what God's word says, but they know the love of God and the truth of God and that you care for them. And you tell us that you cleanse us of every sin. Jesus, I pray that those that are single will make a pact right now to say, for me and my life, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you're a virgin, you're going to say, I'm going to continue to fight for this. If you've given that up and and you forfeited that, I pray right now, you know you're a born-again virgin in Christ Jesus. He no longer longer remembers the past. And you're going to remain pure until you find that one on that wedding day. Holy Spirit, come. Father, thank you for who you are. Jesus, move in this place. God, as we worship you right now, Lord, I pray that you move in a mighty way. Holy Spirit, come. If you're here, we're still praying, and you want to come down, I'm going to invite you just to pray. Nobody cares what you're praying about, but you're saying, God, I, I'm right now. I'm going to continue to devote myself to purity. I'm going to continue to devote myself. I'm going to bring true sexiness back into the campuses into my workplace God because I want to be that woman of God that man of God that says for me in my life and my body it's not my own it's God's Father would you have your way today we pray this in your name amen I want you to stand if you want to come down and pray I want to invite you there's some of you need to meet with God right now I want you to make a pact to say God I'm going to follow you all the days of my life men and women you've been married you're together are you continuing to become the one that God has created you to be?